So, troubleshooting. Yay. Nay, it's, a, it's something that most people don't know how to do. Now, I showed you how to install. Okay. I showed you how to configure. And I showed you how to do everything you need to do to get a working system. Then I showed you how to mess with your desktop environment super quick. By the way, you can totally slow that down to 0.5% speed because there is a part two to the whole Fedora thing. This is part three where we kind of troubleshoot and I run you through how Fedora kind of just works. And uh, to prove that, did you know I just totally reinstalled my GPU, had it up and running, didn't even need to reboot? Yeah, sometimes that does a thing and it's really, really weird because if I do this, oh, I'm not actually typing. Uh, NVIDIA. I can't spell today. I'm doing my best. Dot SMI. There's the driver. We'll clear that out. We're in Wayland, by the way, so we're good to go. So, how do you update your system? With Nabora, there is an update icon that does everything for you. When it comes to just Fedora, you do sudo, sudo DNF, package manager, update. You tell the system to update, and then you're basically refreshing the repos. Always refresh the repos. I find that this tends to avoid issues. So if we do this, you'll notice we have 94 packages that need updating, and I'm surprised. And they're all basically just cosmic at this point. Okay, there's Lutris as well. I saw Lutris right there. And there's the new kernel. So the Cache OS kernel has been updated to 6.12.2, which is, again, behind. But still, uh, unless it's updating with something newer, it's not. Okay, so we're going to hit yes. And once this is finished, it's not going to take long because we modified DNF to download things quickly, which is very, very important. As you can see, Nash now, you know, we end up getting a lot of uh, speed boosts, and that's great. So most of the files download it really quickly. Now, this is going to take a while because, again, it's dealing with your Cache OS kernel. It's got to rebuild some stuff, and it's got to uh, update automatically grub which is nice because there's a nice uh, script there to auto hook that and skipped was the kernel headers yada 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 there we go it does a lot of stuff in the background and to top it all off just to make sure that everything works you always want to do this because this just it tells you if you got issues or errors or anything like that now what it's telling me is that is one fracked kernel and it's not the kernel that we currently have installed which is a good thing it's 6.11.10 i am not a 6.11.10 fan so we're gonna try to remove that real quick okay and i don't know why i opened that up i meant to open this up now if you have an old kernel that you want to get rid of it's kind of important for you you need to clean up space in your boot uh you know just where you hold all your stuff. Uh, words are hard today as well, just to remind you. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to just paste in this. So it tells us that we have this kernel here and I'm gonna get rid of it, honestly. You don't have to get rid of it, but I'm doing this as a showcase for you guys. Because again, this is all troubleshooting, so if we're not using the kernel, I'm getting rid of it. That's how that works. Again, you don't need to do this. It's always good to have a backup kernel. But as you can see, this kernel is giving me a fit and saying there's no such directory, yada, yada, yada. And that's fine. So I'm killing it off. Now we're going to clear this. So there, I showed you how to update. I show you how to remove a kernel that we're currently not using, which is fine. And next, what I want to do is troubleshoot NVIDIA drivers. So, when I showed you how to install the Cache OS kernel, reboot immediately. Just reboot. Like after you update the grub config and you have the Cache OS settings installed, reboot. Then, when you come back in, you can go back into Sue. You can do this. And then you can do not that command, but you can do again this command. This command really, really does help. Like that. You do that command, then you rerun the drivers. Well, actually, you rerun the drivers first, and then you run that command. And that will ensure that the drivers will work. 
because if you're rebooting and you find the drivers not working on that kernel specifically it's because we didn't end up rebooting and that's a problem so this can tend to sometimes fix the issue which is nice and reinstalling the drivers just by running this package can also fix those issues which is great now removing this driver in case you want to switch to the rpm fusion driver is as simple as on install that's it and it runs you through everything you need to do it'll basically say oh you want to remove this driver you agree to it it backs some stuff up it removes some stuff but it's never going to kill your system nvidia redesigned the the driver installation to not remove things that are built into your system so we'll only ever keep track of things that it installed not stuff that you installed that's why it requires certain dependencies to be able to make this work it's very important to know that now i recommend sticking with this driver for one specific reason it's because it has explicit thick it's the reason why wayland works at all wayland is very very good with explicit sync all right it's a lot better than it was with implicit sync the, I, don't, I can't get into those too much because if i do well i'll get confused by doing it and i don't want to do that next implicit sync wastes frames you don't want that explicit sync doesn't waste frames it means it gives you just more well it doesn't give you extra frames it just lets you use all the frames that you're supposed to it's efficient it's efficient there we go all right uh now what do we need to do well we got all of that done there's not much really else that we need to do for troubleshooting it was mostly just the nvidia stuff i um, we need to make you aware of something something that's been happening quite recently that i found out is that fedora is not updating its stuff so if i type mutter i think it's version You'll notice that it's 47.1. Great. So if we go to GNOME Shell, it's not actually great. When we type the same thing, it's 40.1. The current version of GNOME and Mutter are 47.3 on Arch and anywhere else that really houses what you need, it will be updated to that. That is a problem. Other things that are not updated in Fedora, it's wine tricks. And this is where things get a little iffy with the Affinity script is because it's a version from 2023. And those hashes have been updated in the newest version, so those old hashes are no longer being recognized. This is a problem. It means you cannot use wine tricks. That's why I went and showed you how to install and update your own wine tricks. What I forgot to show you is you're going to need cmake make you need both of those oh by the way you also need add in so you can actually install it but you're gonna need both of these to be able to do it because again you can't do sudo make install without make so having make is very very important as you can see i had make install that's why it works so if you had issues with that now you know how to fix for it now uh, what other questions were there? We need to go over this because I do want to get as much answered as I possibly can. So there was a person that says, my guide is to use flat packs and have fun. No. Certain things you use flat packs for. Other things you don't touch them. Steam, Lutris, Heroic are three things that you never use flat packs for. You'll run into a bunch of permission issues. Games won't work here or there. It may work for some, but it's not going to work for everybody. If it has an RPM, if it's in a repo, use the native version. Never touch the flat pack. It's the reason why I used a flat pack for extension manager, wherever that is, right there, is because this thing, whether it's native or not, will work. There's no issues with it. So. Again, when it comes to anything gaming related, if anybody ever tells you to use a flat pack, look them dead in the eye and tell them, no, I want native. If it's possible, you go and grab it, you use the native packaging. You're better off that way. Heroic does auto update. Lutris will update as you saw with the system update and Steam, it updates itself. Honestly, Lutris has started updating itself too and just like Heroic, it just, it's a lot easier that way, you know? Having built-in updaters is great. Now, 
The reason why I chose the closed source drivers is according to performance issues and problems that I've had with the open drivers. I have a whole video about the performance of the open drivers. It's unfortunate, but it still stands. So if you want the best emulation performance, if you want the best gaming performance period and IPC intensive heavy games like Guild Wars 2 and stuff, you need to use the closed drivers. It's disappointing. It is what it is. I'm hoping they fix it soon. Now, anything else? By the way, there was this one guy who's like, doing all this to get an extra 2 FPS is crazy. Doing all this to get an extra 10 to 15 to 30 FPS, depending on the game, it's not crazy. That just makes sense. He clearly doesn't understand what the kernel or the settings are designed for. Do you need the cache US settings for AMD GPUs? Most likely not. But it's good to have it there just in case it does something for you. Because again, it's used on Cache OS itself for AMD GPU users. So maybe it does something that we're just not aware of. Another thing is they asked any advantages of doing this over installing Cache OS. If you like Fedora, if you want to keep Fedora, the advantages are you get to keep using Fedora, but you get to have some of the advantages of using Cache OS, such as the kernel and the settings and everything else here and that that makes a big difference because some people just want to use fedora other people want to use arch other people want to use debian if you're a debian user you want gaming pico os 4 is your only choice if you're a fedora user you have ultramarine you have Nabora, and you have this guide a way to make fedora 41 into a gaming distro that you don't really have to maintenance so there's that Another comment that I got was, did you just rebuild Navara in 20 minutes? Technically, if I decided not to explain everything going on, this would be one video with literally one simple frigging command put into the terminal. That would grab everything for you, do everything. But I don't like that. These videos are about teaching and pushing stuff forward. And technically, I did do that. But there's more to Nabora than just that. SE Linux is removed. App Armor is switched in. There's a lot of other differences between Fedora 41 and Nabora that separate them. Packages on Nabora do work in Fedora 41 specific ones. The kernel does not because, again, App Armor is used and Sys Linux is not. So those are the biggest differences. So some packages won't work, other packages will. Uh, like right now, how I'm using OBS from uh, Devora, which needs an update because the final version of this is out. So, uh, of course, if I go over to the Nabora GitHub and it's Nabora projects and RP sources, or I think it's, is it this one? I believe it's this one. I think I've actually talked in here. Pipewire, Wire Plumber. Messed up Broadcom, newest OBS pipeline is gone. Yeah, so this is the one. So I need to tell them that they need to update their OBS. Yeah, like this right here. See, they have to do their own bump from 47.2 uh, and 47.3. This is this is not something that should need to be done by the Nabara team themselves. This is something that should be done by Fedora and Sync should just happen to pull them in. But they do this specifically because they apply certain patches like fix artifacting and uh, they obviously enable, you know, a VRR by default, which is nice. So I understand why they do this. Now, compiling these two packages is honestly ridiculously easy because if you're using the spec, the spec pulls down all the dependencies, installs it, compiles everything, and does everything for you which is nice. So it should be pretty easy to get that done on their end, which is great. So I think I've answered some questions. If I think of anything else, I'll do another part. But for right now, learning to update and troubleshooting is important. Another thing that I forgot to mention is cache OS kernel secure boot doesn't work. Okay. So uh, you'd have to go through hell to probably get that to work and just it's not worth a video okay try to remember that and i guess the last thing 
is how to auto mount your drives because I think I should probably put this in here. Look how nice this looks. The transparency and the blur needs to be there in GNOME one day. So this is my gaming drive. This is where I keep my games. And as you can see, it's currently mounted at slash mount slash gaming. And how I did this is we're going to use my four terabyte here. I went to edit mount options. I uncollected that one right there. And then I did this. Okay. When I hit okay, I enter my password. When I mount it, it's now going to go. There we go to mount slash backup. And that's where it'll auto be mounted every time. So I can set every single one of my drives to auto mount if I need to. It's pretty easy. It's simple. You only have to do it once unless you wipe out your system, but at least you know how to do it. Now, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, share this video. If you have any questions non-support related, ask them in the comments. If you need support, if it's Nabora related, head to Nabora. If it's Cache OS related, head to the Cache OS Discord. If it's something that neither of them can fix and you think we can pull it off, head to our Discord. If you want to join our community anyway, feel free to do so. If you want to become a member on this channel, don't forget to hit the join button under this video. It really helps me, it pushes me forward. And honestly, I do this as a hobby, so it definitely does help in the long run. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.